Blessed sit in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Merry Christmas. Amen. Amen. I know I've met so many questions, so many people asking me about the day Jesus was born. And uh, I told them I don't know the day. And they said, Then why are you celebrating what you don't know? I told them I'm not celebrating what I don't know. I'm celebrating the person. Amen. And uh, I'm so excited to see you all here today. And you see, grace still rules all the time. Amen. And uh, today I just want to speak to us a very short message. And uh, I've given it a title, Jesus in Jacob today. Jesus in Jacob today. Say Jesus in Jacob today. Yesu, ndani ya Yakobo leo. Amen. We are going to read two, uh, two, from two books. The first book we are going to read is chapter ya kwanza ni John chapter 1 verse 17. Kitabu cha Yohana injili, sura ya kwanza. The book of John chapter 1 verse 17. And then we are also going to read the book of the beginning. You know the book of the beginning? The book of the beginning, beginning, Genesis chapter 35. We shall read from verse 23 to verse 26. So we want to read first of all from the book of John chapter 1, 
verse 17. Are you there? We are going to read from our version. Amen. Three, go. For the law was given through Moses, but God's unfailing love and grace and faithfulness came through Jesus Christ. Uh huh. Let me read King James' version. <laughs> For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Let me read the Amplified. For while the law was given through Moses, grace and and undeserved favor and a spiritual blessing and truth came through Jesus Christ. I want us to go to the book of Genesis chapter 35. Genesis chapter 35. Genesis 35. From verse 23, you'll wonder why am I preaching this on a Christmas day, on a, uh, on a festive season. Are you there? Let me read from the New Translation Version. The Bible says, the sons of Leah were Reuben, that's Jacob's oldest son, right? Simeon, Levi, Judah, Isaac, and Zebulun, the sons of Rachel, were Joseph and Benjamin. The sons of Bilhah, Rachel's servant, were Dan and Naphtali. The sons of Zilpha, Leah's servant, were Gad and Asher. These were the names of the sons who were born to Jacob at Padan Haram in Mwanzo 35 mstari wa 23 hadi 29 Now from Genesis to Revelation the Bible is revealing only one person Who is this person? Who is this person? Now, the day of Christmas, or when we are celebrating Christmas, we are simply celebrating the victory that man received. We are celebrating the salvation we received. We are celebrating the forgiveness we received. In other words, we are celebrating the introduction of good news to the people. Christmas is not just a one day thing. The purpose for the celebration should be a daily thing. The reason why it's, as, it's set aside for the celebration like 25th, which is towards the end of the year, when these guys were coming up with the calendar, they decided to make sure that all the celebrations we do them towards the end of the year, so that when the year begins, we start with another thing altogether. And uh, Christmas, from the Latin, it's called Misa. Say Misa. That's the Latin word. Misa was a day that people were coming together just to remember that there was a person who is more important than a day and that we are celebrate, celebrating the person and not the day. The law had been given to the Israelites and people were trying to obey the law. And you remember the law, <coughs> the law came with the culture or with the mindset of the Jew. But man could not keep the law. And therefore, God brings grace to salvage man. Why? Because God is still in the process of restoring man to the lost glory that he lost in the garden of Eden. The purpose of God coming, becoming a man was to save a man. So, 
Jesus being born means God becoming a man to save a man. There's no prophet who could have saved a man. There's no preacher who could have saved a man. There's no law that will have saved a man. God has been revealing Christ to the people all the way from Genesis. But men were not able to understand what God was doing. Therefore, God decides to become a man for him to be able to save a man. And Moses had given out people the law on the mountain. But Jesus decides to come himself with grace and truth. Now, grace is not just a teaching. Grace is not a concept. Grace is not a doctrine. Grace is a person, Jesus Christ. It's by having grace the person who is Jesus Christ that you can now have grace, uh, access to grace, the gift, grace, the virtue, grace, the blessing. So it's grace the person that brings grace the gifts. From where we read in the book of Genesis chapter 35, very fast, the Bible says that the sons of Leah were Reuben, who is Jacob's firstborn, Simeon, Levi, Judah, Issachar, and Benjamin, the sons of Bilhah, were Rachel, were Rachel's maid, were Dan and Naphtali. And the sons of Zilpah, Leah's maid, were Gad and Asher. And these were the sons, are the sons of Jacob, born to him in Padam Haram. Now, I want to concentrate here a little bit and then we finish our service today. We have heard in the Bible, the Bible saying, talk about the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Why are they using the name the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? It's because in Israel those days, we had several gods, idol gods. But there's only one God who was distinguished by his character, by his personality, by the word. He spoke by his fulfillment to the promises, by the miracles he was performing. He was only God, Jehovah, that no one could compare him to anything else or anyone else. Amen? You remember when Moses went to Egypt and he tried to perform some miracles. The Bible says that even the prophets of Egypt tried to perform miracles. You remember? We have seen so many prophets, so many idols performing miracles in the names of Beelzebul or in the names of other witch power. But there's only one person that his miracle remained outstanding. He is Yahweh, the creator. His name is Jesus. Now, when the Bible talks about the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, this is what it means. The God, the, this is the God we are all worshiping here, right? But this God we are talking about has become man to save man. And who is the man? Jesus. When you talk about the God of Abraham, we are talking about the God of covenants. You can write this down. When we are talking about the God of Abraham, the Bible simply is simply talking about God of covenants. When you look at the life of Abraham, they were just covenants, 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 covenants. Covenant, a covenant is an agreement of friendship. A covenant is an agreement of friendship. A covenant is an agreement of friendship. Between two people with a witness. 
between two people and with a witness. Therefore, Abraham made so many covenants. When you hear someone telling you that claim your promises, claim your promises, these promises are the covenants that God made with Abraham. Are you there? And I want you to know one thing. There is no promise of God. There is no covenant made by God and humanity that has not yet been fulfilled. All have been fulfilled in Christ. All have been fulfilled in Christ. Because Jesus did not come to abolish the law. He came to fulfill the law. By fulfilling the law means bringing all the promises of God. All the promises of God into fulfillment. So when you talk about the God of Abraham, we are talking about a God of covenants and a God who fulfilled covenants. The God of Isaac. When the Bible talks about the God of Isaac, he simply talks about God of miracles. The God of Abraham is a God of covenant agreement. The God of Isaac is a God of miracles. The life of Isaac was all about miracles. His birth, we all know. The father gave birth to him at an old age, past the age of giving birth. I have something for you here. There is no expiry date in God for you to receive anything he wants you to receive. These guys, the age had expired according to men's calendar. But still, they were able to conceive and have a child. Whose name is that? Isaac. When you look at Isaac's birth, it was a miracle. You look at Isaac, when, the Lord, when Abraham wanted to fulfill the covenant of the Lord, he went to sacrifice Isaac. But at the same, same time, Isaac, who is a form or a shadow of Jesus Christ, we see a lamp coming out to die so that Isaac can be preserved. The same way after we had all sinned, we see Jesus coming as a sacrificial lamb so that humanity can do what? Can be saved. So Isaac, the Bible says, he planted during the drought and he had a great harvest. Isaac was a man of miracle. His life was all miracle. This man, he redacted the wells of the father and he got water. The whole life of Isaac, he never went to any war. He never fought any war or any battle. Why? He was a child of covenant. A child of miracle. Amen. When you talk about Jacob, Jacob means transformation. Jacob means transformation. Jacob means transformation. The God of, Ab oh, the God of Jacob means a God who is able to change the worst thing and bring the best out of it. He changes the worst and brings out the best out of it. We see Jacob, he, was, he looked like the worst person ever. But God had to deal with him so that he can receive the blessing of the Lord. He transformed him first. Now, I know many people say that Jacob stole the blessing of Esau. Have you heard of that? Mesikei ya kwamba Yakobo aliiba baraka za Esau. How many people have ever heard of that? We have heard of that, right? That Jacob tricked the father to receive the blessing from the father. You have heard of that, right? When I say my Jacob tricked who? The brother who? Who's, what's the name of the brother? Esau. Kofu anasema Yakobo aliba baraka za Esau. Ali trick Esau. Mesikei yo njili, sindiyo? It's wrong, not true. Let me show you what happened. The Bible says that when Mary, uh, so when, when, when Rebecca, the mother to Jacob and Esau was pregnant, mimbayake ilianza kumsumbua. Are you aware of that? So she went to Asiya. Asiya was another name for the man of God or a prophet, someone who can see. So Asiya looked at Rebekah and said, 
you are suffering is because in you you are carrying two children and these two children are two nations and these two nations they are the ones fighting why because the younger one will rule over the elder one and the elder one will serve the younger one are you there so the mother had that so when they were born who came out first esau who came last jacob meaning who was the firstborn esau who was the lastborn jacob but what does the, what, what did the, the seer say the younger will rule over who the elder and look at this look just look at this the younger will rule over the elder now here esau was a hunter he loved hunting but jacob was another farmer who used to keep cattle back at home are you there and the bible says jacob stayed at home and prepared some stew and esau came from the field to hunt and he was hungry be very careful when you bargain while hungry you will make very stupid decisions when you are hungry don't negotiate <laughs> when you feel you are desperate don't negotiate sit down rest eat then come back to the negotiating table you will have sober mind to negotiate amen now look at this jacob esau asks jacob now, my, my question is normally when you go back home and you are hungry who do you ask for food your mother or your sibling huh esau did not go to ask for food from the mother he went to who jacob and jacob akamwambia for me to give you this soup tell me that i'm the firstborn esau akasema what is firstborn with una hii njamba inanipeleka ah nalio liwalo you are the firstborn give me soup so esau sold nasikia ilikuwa ni soup ya ndengu so cheap so esau sold his birthright to who to the brother elder brother to the younger brother remember what the seer told who the mother that the younger will rule over the elder now esau has just sold his birthright to jacob then one day he hears the father say to esau esau the father say to esau esau my son i want to bless you because you are my firstborn go get me something to eat so that i can bless you mama naye akasikia akasema hapana i can still remember what the prophet said it is the young one to be blessed not the older and esau without even telling the brother that my dad want to bless me he runs to the field to go and get an animal to bring to the father esau between esau and jacob who was trying to trick and steal from the other huh? because already esau had sold his birthright so eh, jacob was now the firstborn are you there esau angambia babake dad i sold my birthright already so kindly bless my brother jacob but esau anatoka siri siri kwenda kufanya nini kutafuta chakula alete babake ambarik let me tell you there's no conspiracy that anybody born with you together in the same family or not in the same nation or not in the same company or staying together with you there's no conspiracy they'll plan about short changing you that will go through the same god who promised you who spoke it he shall surely bring it to pass whatever the enemy try is trying to do in the secret the lord will turn it around on your behalf and that's a good news hallelujah that jesus came to do to do to bring a substitute that instead of you suffering he suffered instead of people torturing you changing your blessing the lord will work out a miracle amen are you there now look at this look at this jacob akaambiwa na mamake your father wants to bless your brother 
Now, let me speak this to our family of believers who are listening to me today. The blessing of a child comes from the father and not from the mother. Because the father is the giver of the seed. Can I repeat that again? The blessing of the, fa- of the child comes from the father to the son or to the child. Because the father is the giver of the seed. Even though Rebecca had what the prophet said, she could not bless Jacob. She had to work out means so that the father will do what? Eventually do what? Bless the son. What happens is this. When the father fails in his duty and responsibility as a father, the mantle of parents blessing their children in the realm of the spirit, it shifts, it changes. Now it goes to the mother. Now the mother has the ability to bless the children. This is because of the establishment of the new covenant in Christ Jesus. Are you hearing me? Now for men who are here and you are not playing your role, a mantle has been changed already. You better go back to your role and play them correctly. Because the mantle changes immediately a man fails in his responsibility. And because God will always look for an alternative to, do, to make sure that the blessing, the chain does not stop. Are you there now? Now, Jacob prepares some food and takes to the father. And the father said, the voice is like Jacob's. But the body is like Esau. Nevertheless, I'm full. Come, I bless you. Jacob is blessed by the father. When Esau heard that Jacob is blessed, Esau wanted to kill the father, uh, the brother, Jacob. So Jacob runs away. Now, let me help you understand this. Jacob, on his way, running to his uncle's place. What was the name of the uncle? Laban. Good. He was running away from the brother who wanted to kill him. Are you there now? And there's something that happened here. On his way, he reaches a place called Bethel. He was tired. Then he took some stones. Akalalia. The stone stands for... Last time I told you about the stones. What did they stand for? Huh? What did they stand for? The stones. The rock. What does it stand for? The law. So this man sleeps on the law. Thinking that by keeping the law, he is safe. At night, he has a dream. And in the dream, a ladder stretching from heaven to the earth. And the angels were descending and ascending. Descending and ascending. Descending and ascending. Which simplifies that the law you are resting on cannot save you. But grace is coming directly from heaven to you. Are you there now? Now, Jacob goes to the uncle's place. He stays there. He sees the uncle's daughters, who are supposed to be cousins. He saw the firstborn, Leah, was so, so, not that pretty. Then he saw the secondborn, by the name of who? Rachel, who was so pretty. And Jacob loves Rachel or Rael. And he said to the uncle, I want to marry your daughter. And the uncle said, how are you going to pay dowry? He said, I will work for you seven years for her. When a man truly loves, there's nothing he cannot do. Ladies, if you see this man not going extra, he hasn't seen what is worth investing in. Men are not mean. They are only wise and careful. 
to invest in the right place. <laughs> yeah? Men are not mean. They are only wise. They know where to invest. Who wants to invest in a bank that you have heard is soon collapsing? Who? Who wants to invest in a, in a corporate where there are no dividends, there are no shares, and there are no rebates? No one. Someone wants to invest. Let me tell you today, ladies who are here. Ladies who are here. Are you, are you hearing me, ladies? Become that noble woman, a carrier of treasure that this man cannot find it anywhere else. He will invest in you. This is a good message for Christmas. So. Ladies who are ever looking at what they are receiving and not what they are giving. They are just looking for how to consume. That's why they ask, we are going out, we are going Christmas, we are going to buy They are not talking about what they have done in return to deserve that. Amen. No, we are not talking about marriage. Let me continue the next one. Amen. And men, you need to know, I told you last Sunday, women are very good people. You give them anything, they reproduce back and give it back to you. Okay? So, men, open your eyes to see where to invest. And women, as invested, kindly reproduce and give it back. Full measure. Press down. Shaken. And doing what? Running over. Now, Jacob works for seven years to be given who? Rachel. Instead, he is strict. Kumbuka, malipo ni hapa hapa tu. Apandacho manadama, anafanya nini? This time, angambia tu babake, daddy, I'm not Esau, I'm Jacob. I'm Jacob. But, Esau, alinuzia, birthright. Kwa hivyo sasa, mimi ni Jacob, ni bariki ni kwa sababu, Jacob, Esau, birthright yake, alifanya nini? Alinipa. Lakini sasa, hapa, amefanya nini? Ametumia ujianja kamambia mimi ni Esau. Are you getting what I'm talking about? Alisema mimi ni nani? Esau. Na hea alikuwa ni nani? Jacob. The same way, anatrikiwa pia na anko yake. Analitewa, Lea. Instead of who? Rachel. So, what you saw is exactly what you do what? You reap. So he was given Lea. The Bible said that Lea, alikuwa ni mtu ambaye macho yake ilikuwa inatoa matone. Yani, mtu ambaye macho yake ilikuwa, haikuwa mzuri sana. Rachel was pretty. But nevertheless, babaki anko yake akamuambia, according to the culture, the firstborn must get married first before the lastborn. The same trick continues. Okay, I'm almost about to finish. Jacob asked the uncle, Why have you deceived me? The uncle akamwambia, culturally, atungeza kukupatia second born, kama firstborn, bado. Hajaolewa. Tazi ilibidi tufanya hivo, but tuneza kuamua tukupatia watu, ah, watu, wasiana wote. Only if you work for me seven more years. Jacob nae ni nani? Hakaanza kwe sabu miakatena ingine. Saba. Bila kuchoka non-stop. Hakafanya kazi. Because he was still not satisfied with what was given. So he was still working for what he wanted. After seven years he was given who? Rachel. Now, this is what happens. Rachel whom Jacob loved most, his womb is closed. But Leah, whom Jacob never loved most, his womb is open. Listen, this is exactly what is happening today. The people you don't expect anything from them are the same people. The Lord is blessing them. You hate them, they prosper. You hate them, they continue. You despise them, they continue. The same stone that was rejected by builders later on became the chief cornerstone. I'm here to speak a prophetic word to somebody, even on this festive season. That the same you who have been despised and rejected by many, a time is coming. They look at you and see the good news of the Lord. They will all acknowledge that this must have been the hand of the Lord over the people. Hallelujah. Now, Jacob is given Leah. 
But after seeing the Leah, he gives birth to the following children. The Bible says, and the sons of Leah were Reuben, Jacob, Jacob's firstborn, and Simeon, and Levi, and Judah, and Isaac, and Zebulun. The sons of God, of Rachel, were Joseph and Benjamin. Now look at this. This person who was rejected, this person that Jacob never loved, started giving birth to children. And for every child they gave birth, the mother and the father, they named this child some names, which brings about the gospel of Jesus Christ. After like, Leah had given birth to some children, and Rachel was not giving birth. What happened? Rachel alichukua mfanyikazi wake akapatia Jacob the husband. According to those days, msichana wakazi angeza mtoto, huyo mtoto angekua ni mtoto wako. Ulukua kama huwezi ukajifungua, ukaza, unachukua huyo mtoto mfanyikazi, unachukua mfanyikazi, unamupa mme wake, anaza mtoto. Then huyo mtoto anafanyika kuwa mtoto wako, amba atapata urithi kwako. The same way it happened. Now, ikakua kwamba because Rachel was not giving birth, akachukua mfanyikazi wake, jinalaka alikuwa naitua nani? Huh? Bilha. Good. Akapatia mewake Jacob. Amzalia watoto. Nae Bilha akaza Dan na Naftali. Are you there? Wakatu huwa huwa likuwa meza Dan na Naftali. Ndiyo sasa tumbo la recho likafunguliwa. Akaweza kuzaa watoto wawili. Lakini kumbuka alikufa akiwa na zaa mtoto waki wa mwisho. Kwa jina nani? Benjamin. Are you there? But una, Lea alipona kuamba pia yeye watoto amemaliza ame kuzaa watu na bada nataka watoto wengine. Akachukua mfanyikazi wake pia. Alikuwa naitua nani? Eh? Zilpa. Akachukua mtoto wake. I, I, I'm asking this question because I want to make sure that tuko pamoja in the same script. Akachukua Zilpa. Akampatia mme wake, akamzalia watoto wangapi? Wawili tena. Wa kwanza alikuwa anaitwa Gad na mwingine alikuwa anaitwa Asha. Are you there? Now let me tell you as I finish the names of the children of Jacob from the first to the last. The first child was called Reuben. What is the meaning of the word Reuben? When Leah gave birth to Reuben, akasema your name will be called Reuben. For behold a son is born to us. Reuben means a son is born to us. And Leah said, now because a son is born to us, my husband will love me more. Amen. The second born, I hope you are writing down because this is the gospel. This is the gospel now. I'm about to finish. Are you writing down? The first born was called who? Reuben. Reuben means what? Now, let me take you back kidogo uelewe how it works, how Jacob, Isaac, uh, how Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob works. This is how it works. The God of Abraham is a God, a God of covenants. Are you there? The God of Isaac is a God of miracle. And the God of Jacob is a God of transformation. Now, when it comes to functionality, this is how it works. It becomes now the God of Jacob, Isaac, and Abraham. When we are calling them, we start with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. But now when they are functioning, we start with, Isaac, with Jacob, Isaac, and Abraham. This is what it means. It's the God of, Isaac, of Jacob that comes to transform you so that you can receive the miracles that will fulfill the covenant. Umeipata yo? Umeipata? Now, is the God of Jacob transforming humanity so that humanity can receive a miracle of which that miracle is the fulfillment of the covenant that was made by who? God and Abraham. Now, in the same way, God, the Father, is a covenant-making God. God, the Son, who is Jesus Christ, is a God of miracle. Then God, the Holy Spirit, is a God of transformation. That means the Holy Spirit comes upon you to work in you, 
through who? Jesus Christ. That the name of Jehovah God Yahweh may be glorified. Are you there now? Now, the second born to Jacob, his name was called Simon. Simon means one who hears. Yule ambaye anasikia. That's the meaning of the word Simon. We have Simon in the house. Huh? If I have Simon in the house, I, I hope you are one who hears. That's the meaning of the word Simon, the name Simon. Then, Jacob has another third born. What was the name of the third born? Levi. Levi means the attached one. Attached. Then from there, Jacob has the fourth one. Fourth born by the name who? Judah. Judah means what? Praise the Lord. Judah means praise the Lord. Judah means praise the Lord. Then from Judah, we have the fifth born. What's the name of the fifth born? Dan. Dan means he judged. So Leah was saying, God judged me fairly and given, has given me more children than expected. So Dan means he judged. Then the sixth born of Jacob, his name was Naphtali. Naphtali means my struggle. I was given this because of the struggle I went through. Naphtali means what? My struggle. Now, Jacob gives birth again to the seventh born from the house girl. And he gave him the name God. God means good fortune. God means good fortune. Meaning, I never deserved to give birth with Jacob, but kwa bahati nzuri nimejifungua na nani? Na Yakobo. Good fortune. Then he also gave birth to a child called Asha. Asha means happiness. Asha means what? Happiness. Asha, happiness. Asha, happiness. Then from there, Lea akapata watoto na mfanyikazi wake. Watoto wa Jacob. Number eight. Akaitwa nani? Isaka. Isaka means reward. Isaka means what? Reward. Isaka means reward. Akazaa nae wapili. Akamuita jina Zebulan. Zebulan means honor, heshima. Zebulan means heshima. Then Rachel akafunguliwa tumbo akazaa firstborn kwa jina nani Joseph Joseph means added to my family so if you are Joseph wewe kazi yako ni plus addition added to the family Joseph added to the family umeongezwa bonus wewe ni bonus baraka bonus hizi then akazaa mmoja wa mwisho kwa jina Benjamin. Benjamin means son of righteousness. Son of righteousness. Son of righteousness. I'll repeat kwa sababu ya wale ambao wajashika nitarudia tena. Firstborn ama mzaliwa wa kwanza wa Jacob alikuwa anaitwa Reuben. Reuben inamaanisha nini? Mwana amezaliwa kwetu. A son born to is born to us. Wapili alikuwa anaitwa Simeon. Simeon means what? One who hears. Yule ambaye anasikia. Alafu akapewa watatu kwa jina nani? Levi. Anayeshikanishwa na sisi. Attached to us, Levi. Then he was given Judah, meaning what? Praise the Lord. Judah means praise the Lord. Judah inamaanisha bwana asifiwe. Yaani tumsifu Mungu. Badai akapewa Dan ambaye inamaanisha huyu ni wakimu. Ay, huyu a, a, ni kama yani anayehukumu yani he is a judged. 
he judged one then akapewa naftali meaning my struggle kwa sababu ya kusumbuka kwangu nimepewa naftali baadaye akapewa mtoto god god means good fortune but nzuri baadaye akapewa asha means happiness baadaye akapewa isaac isaac inamaanisha reward ama zawadi kutunukiwa baadaye akapewa zebulan heshima zebulan inamaanisha heshima kisha akapewa joseph inamaanisha ameongezeka kwa familia mwisho kabisa akapewa benjamin mwana wa haki son of righteousness now this is what it all says the name of the sons of jacob the names of the sons of jacob is the gospel for today the names of the sons of jacob is the gospel of today this is what it sounds what it says from the first one to the last one behold a son is born to us one who hears us and one who is attached to us praise the lord he judged our struggle and brought us good fortune happiness reward and honor he added us to his family and called us sons of righteousness this is the gospel this is the gospel have you seen it now do you think it is the right message for this christmas huh now listen let me repeat the, the gospel for christmas behold a son is born to us with the son jesus one who hears us and one who is attached to us jesus is forever attached to us right praise the lord he judged our struggle and brought us good fortune happiness reward honor and he added us to his family and called us the sons of righteousness and who is that person who is that person i can't hear you who is that person who is that person now jesus means jesus means as i finish ukiandika unaandika kutoka juu kwenda chini jesus means jesus means jesus means he justifies every sinner under salvation hallelujah jesus means justifies every sinner under salvation anahesabia haki kila mwenye dhambi aliye chini ya wokovu for everyone under salvation you have been justified you have been counted the righteous of god so the name jesus is not just a mere name mentioned in the sermon jesus is the content the context the text the paragraph the remark the mark the outline of the entire bible on a day like this he brought good news he came to deliver you from where you could not deliver yourself where your energy could not deliver you from where your work could not deliver you from he came to give you the good news that no man was able to give to you therefore i brought you good news today in the name of jesus i brought you good news i brought you good news that the same jesus who was born on that day he is the same yesterday today and forever he is our savior our redeemer he is our restorer he is the one attached to us 
And he's the one we are celebrating. We are not celebrating the day. We are celebrating the person attached to that day. And the person's name is Jesus Christ. The savior of the universe. The one who brings good news where there's bad news. The one who brings love where there's hatred. The one who brings salvation where there's condemnation of sin. The one who brings righteousness where there is unrighteousness. The one who redeems mankind. The one who came to make you one together with him. He is the same son of God, the lamb of God, the one who was slain, the one who died, who, the one who was born to die, the only human being who was born to die, the great I am, the one who was there, who is there, who shall forever be there, the one who said, I will not leave you nor forsake you. He is forever attached to you. He is always together with you in your distress in your depression in your rejection in your lack in your sickness in your diseases in your affliction he is ever present the present help at times of need the closer friend than a brother one who sits closer to you than a relative to you even when everyone else has turned against you one who was more than willing to come just to die for the sake of saving mankind he was more than ready to shed his blood for your sake the one who has given us the importance and the meaning of life today life without christ is not life life without jesus is a wasted life show me an important person show me an honorable person i will not show you your politician i will show you a man or a woman who is connected to the king of king to the lord of laws to the great i am to our shepherd our lord jesus christ he is forever and ever there for you. He is there committed to make sure he sees you through with good news always. And the good news will forever remain in your heart. And the good news will forever remain attached to you. As you celebrate the festive season, I bring you good news that Jesus is the solution for what you've been going through, for what you need or desire in him. In Jacob, we see Jesus. In Abraham, we see Jesus. In Isaac, we see Jesus. In the prophets, we see Jesus. In Genesis, we see Jesus. In Revelation, we see Jesus. Therefore, the most important thing on Christmas time and festive season is not the new cloth you are bought, it's not being taken out, it's not the new the good lunch, it's not the good buffet. The most important thing, important person we are celebrating over this festive season is a Christ who took the nobodies, transformed the nobodies, brought the miracle into the nobodies to fulfill the covenant of God with East, with mankind and made the nobody become a person, somebody precious before him. Precious before him. I want us to pray that this loving grace hallelujah that's why there's a song say, that says amazing grace how sweet the sound you know the song you know the song that amazing grace yes how sweet the sound that saved a rich like me an amazing grace we experience on Christmas day listen to me this is the only day Jesus made all men equal and precious to him amazing grace how sweet the sound that saved
again. Confess, I confess you are the Lord. You are the Lord. I receive you I receive in my spirit, with my spirit as my Lord as my Lord and my Savior. And my Savior. Holy, Spirit, Holy Spirit, make my body, make my body your dwelling place. Your dwelling place. Lead me. Lead me. Guide me. Guide me. Protect me. Protect and preserve me. And preserve From today. Me. From today. I belong to Jesus. I belong to Jesus. This amazing grace. This amazing grace. Is mine as well. Is mine as well. In Jesus' name. Name, in Jesus' name, I'm saved. I'm saved. Amen. Amen. Can we give Jesus praise in the house, everybody? The purpose for Christmas is to remind you of the amazing grace, amazing love poured forth for you and for your family. Amen. 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 And Jesus did not call you to be born again, to suffer again. You are born again, to enjoy again, to be alive again, to be restored again, to have joy again. That's why the good news has come to you. Amen. I want to pray with you. I just want to pray with you. But before I do that, can you just lift up your hands, open your mouth and say with me, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus today, today manifest, the joy manifest the joy of 
this season, of this season in my life, in my life, in my heart, in my heart, and in my family. And in my I just pray that the Lord will shine abroad His love, peace, and joy upon your life today. That the Lord will shine His love upon you. 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 We are praying. Together, the online viewers, just put your hands. We are praying together. In the name above every other name, Emmanuel, God with us, Jesus, Yeshua, the Savior of the world, of the universe. We are so grateful to you. We are honored to celebrate you, Lord. We are honored to be associated to you. We are honored to be called by your name. We are honored to be called the sons of God. And today, we thank you because of the great blessing that you brought to our lives by saving our lives from condemnation, from judgment, from destruction. And you gave us hope, you gave us peace, and you gave us eternal life. And you brought the kingdom of God in our hearts today. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we thank you. Abba Father. We have never seen a friend who gives up his or her life for another like you did. I pray in the name of Jesus that every sadness that was resting in the hearts of your children is now turning into joy. The joy of Christmas. May it overshadow your life today in the name of Jesus. The joy of the Lord overshadow your family, overshadow your life, overshadow your health, overshadow your, your business, overshadow your endeavors, overshadow all that you aspire to do in the name of Jesus. From this moment, I decree and declare the happiness and the joy of the Lord over your life. Wherever you go, whatever you do, the peace of the Lord is upon you. The joy of the Lord is upon you. The health of the Lord is upon you. In the name of Jesus, every struggle has been replaced by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ into our hearts. And therefore today, we rejoice and enjoy the goodness of the Lord in the name of Jesus. Every sickness destroyed, every curse destroyed, every bondage destroyed, every, uh, every unworthiness destroyed in the name of Jesus Christ. Receive the blessing of the Lord, the favor of the Lord, the goodness of the Lord, the mercies of God in the name of the Lord. Father, we thank you and we bless you and we love you and we honor you. In Jesus' mighty, everlasting, loving, generous name, we pray. Amen. Give Jesus praise. Amen. 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 Our online viewers, God bless you. You can give your offering on the number displayed there. You can send your, your offering on that number. Even as you help propagate this gospel of Jesus Christ to the entire world. God bless you. God keep you. And may the face of the Lord shine over your life. In Jesus' name. Amen.